Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for Pro Bono Institute's Pro Bono Happy Hour. I'm David Lipscomb, Director of Strategic Communications for PBI. The Pro Bono Happy Hour is our new series of podcasts in which we highlight law firm pro bono challenge signatories and law firm pro bono project members. In this edition, PBI Communications Specialist Yvette Crenshaw interviews Susan Finnegan, pro bono partner at Mintz, Levin, Cohn, Ferris, Glovsky, and Popeo. Susan took some time to speak with us about Mintz Levin's pro bono program, touching on issues including pro bono as a professional development tool, use of PBI's law firm pro bono challenge as a way to promote and enhance pro bono work, and the importance and challenges of good pro bono management. Whether you're commuting, having a bite to eat, or typing away at your computer, have a listen and we hope you enjoy. Hi, Susan. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself and the pro bono program at Mintz Levin, that'd be great. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, Nice to speak with you today. Um, So I'm Sue Finnegan. I serve as the firm's pro bono partner, and I work out of the firm's Boston office. Um, uh, The firm has um, eight different offices, uh, mostly uh, in the U.S., but we do have a London office as well. Um, and I oversee the pro bono work for the firm uh, and uh, firm-wide. And then I also um, do a lot of cases uh, with associates, uh, mostly in the Boston office, but also in other offices as well. Um, we have about, I'd say about 400 ongoing matters in our eight different offices. Um, and they vary from litigation matters uh, and corporate matters uh, bankruptcy matters, all different types of matters, but they're pretty varied uh, in nature and in size as well. Okay. So do you guys have like a pro bono committee? Yes, we do. We have a, uh, we have a committee. We've had a committee since the late 1980s. Uh, and uh, back in, I think in 89, the firm's uh, uh, policy committee put in place a committee uh, and put in place a, a policy, a pro bono policy. And the committee is made up of uh, individuals, both associates and partners, from all the different offices and from uh, many of the different sections of, of the firm as well. Um, it's mostly it's half associates and half partners, I'd say. Several of the, the individuals who oversee the work in our different offices, um, such as our uh, an associate in our D.C. office oversees our D.C. Uh, office pro bono work, she serves on the pro bono committee as well, and same with our New York office. We have a person that oversees our work in our New York office, and she serves on the, um, the committee as well. And uh, we, it's a national committee. It's, um, it's, it's a firm-wide national committee uh, as well. And I, I, I heard that you said that it's mixed. Um, you guys have associates and senior attorneys, correct? Yes. Yeah, so we have, we have partners of the firm who, um, who serve on the committee and, uh, and associates. And so most of the associates... I'd say all of the associates who are part of the committee have done a significant amount of pro bono work. Most of them are mid to senior level associates, um, and several of them run major programs um, for uh, for the firm. So, for example, um, there is an associate in our Boston office who is on the uh, pro bono committee who runs our Lawyer for the Day program in housing court um, and has that kind of monthly program. And she also oversees um, various other initiatives, um, such as, you know, a clinic in a box program and different things. So it, it, most of the, all the associates who are, who are a part of the uh, committee uh, have done a significant amount of pro, pro bono work and the partners as well. Sure. That's good. And I'm, I'm sure it's great to have that mix. How do the how do you guys develop core competencies at the firm, and do you guys work with the professional development team? So I would say we definitely do work with our closely with the professional development team. Um, each of uh, each section has different core competencies competencies that they're that they're looking to develop in associates, both at the junior, mid level, and senior levels. And so I kind of work closely with them, mostly on the litigation side because I'm a litigator by trade, um, and and help develop, um, you know, try to figure out what gaps um, there are in in associates development and try to fill those gaps as well with our pro bono work. So, for example, in our Boston office, um, there were some associates who had some 
real interest in uh, developing competencies in uh, deposition work, and they hadn't necessarily gotten those opportunities on their paid client work. And so um, I developed a program with the Greater Boston Legal Services uh, in with the, working with their housing unit and their family unit, and we would go in uh, in a limited way, in a limited assistance representation way, and assist them in taking those depositions. And in some instances, you know, if if they needed our help, um, the associates would then get to try the case as well, which is great because they're getting trial skills, but they're also getting the final piece of you know, the development of their deposition skills, you know, because you can't really tell how your deposition was until you go to trial and you realize what you did wrong. So um, so I would say, like, programs like that um, are really providing a great um, opportunity to help low-income clients, but they're also helping develop professional development. And at the same time, in that program in particular, what I realized was that legal services couldn't really afford to take depositions because they couldn't Pay, it was really difficult for them to pay the hundreds of dollars for um, the, the stenographer to come in. And so we were able to provide that for them. And therefore, even if we didn't help with the trial because they didn't need our help, they were able to have a much better uh, trial in representing their client going forward, um, having had that record and having done that discovery. Okay, good. And uh, do you guys have like an award ceremony or anything like that? Like how is pro bono celebrated at your firm? So yeah, we do have an award ceremony. We have had an annual pro bono celebration for the last, I'd say 15 or 16 years. Um, And uh, we have, it's a firm-wide celebration. Usually happens in the summertime when our summer associates are here and that seems to have worked really well. Um, and typically, it's we give a one big pro bono award, and um, sometimes when the case merits it, we give out uh, uh, kind of a long-standing service award to someone who um, has been at the firm a long time but hasn't really been recognized for their one big victory um, the prior year. Because the um, the pro bono award that we give out each year is a uh, kind of outstanding work in the prior year. And there are some people who have done outstanding work, you know, throughout the years, but never rose to the the top person. And so we we, we sometimes give those out. And then other times when there's an unusual situation where someone has risen to uh, either a section or perhaps a class uh, of 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 associates, for example, we'll give out a special recognition award. Um, this past year, for example, we gave out. Um, a long-standing service award to a prior managing partner of our firm that actually developed um, our whole domestic violence program back in the mid-90s and also uh, had developed our charitable giving program that aligned with domestic violence initiatives. Um, So he he was the one who received the long-standing service award. And then um, our our San Diego office uh, also won an award for their domestic violence program as well as a special recognition. So so it's a really wonderful event. It's one of my favorite events of the year and uh, very well attended throughout the throughout the firm. Um, I think one of the things that's challenging, obviously, is when you only give out one award um, and you have a lot of different offices, you know, I think it's trying to make sure that all offices get recognized um, is an important aspect of things. That's good. That's good. And I'm sure it's a great incentive for other people, you know, who are not necessarily as involved to get involved. So right. yes. that, that's very, wonderful. It's, it's very inspirational. So typically when we have, when someone wins the big award, we have their client come in and speak about them. And that's always a really wonderful way for um, the client to thank the, the attorney, um, but also put a real voice to the work that we do. And uh, that's been a really nice uh, way to get, as you said, get people inspired. You know, when you hear a story of someone who, some, a lot of times they end up being, you know, maybe an immigration matter, for example, where you've basically saved someone's life by getting them asylum, um, to hear them speak about the, the life-changing uh, work that the attorney did is pretty, um, is pretty incredible. So that's been a really nice way of, of celebrating. Sure. What's the criteria for the award? So um, the award, uh, the act, the big award, the the, the it used to be called the Mintz Levin Pro Bono Award, but it's now named after uh, Richard Mintz, who um, was a longstanding partner and uh, who uh, passed away a few years ago. So the the criteria for um, the Richard Mintz Pro Bono Award is um, a long, so an outstanding service in pro bono the prior year. So it's really someone who has um, done a significant case. 
uh, on the corporate side or on the, um, the litigation side um, over the past year. Um, and so last year it was given to an, a senior associate in litigation section who worked on a really high-profile domestic violence matter um, and and prevailed for their clients. And uh, so that was, uh, you know, a, a wonderful way to sort of celebrate our domestic violence program generally, but also the work that this associate had done. Good. Now I want to switch gears a bit here, and I want to uh, talk about the 20th anniversary of the law firm Pro Bono Challenge. How has being a signatory to the challenge impacted your firm's pro bono program? It's really, you know, I, I remember, uh, you know, I was a member, I was an associate member of our, our pro bono committee when we, we signed on, and I remember there being a lot of excitement about it. I mean, I, I think that um, it, um, it definitely gives a goal in mind for all levels of the firm to really, you know, understand what our goals are and gravitate towards that goal. And it also gives an opportunity for firm management and leadership to really understand what it what it's you know to, to to budget for it and to really be accountable for that number and I think that that's um it's been a really helpful tool I think in terms of um now being someone who's overseeing the program at the time I wasn't I was just I was, I was just part one member of the committee and now I'm the person tasked with that um, I, I still think that it's been a really valuable valuable tool not to mention all of the um you know the technical support that we've gotten from from PBI over the years. So let me ask you, what's changed since the challenge? So like you said, that's, that's been a, a while ago, and of course we're celebrating 20 years now. So what do you think has changed? I think like all firms, I think pro bono um, programs have really developed so much over the last 20 years. Um, there's just, there's a, there's a, um, a real understanding that it's important to have someone at the firm who not just is you know is spending a little bit of time on it throughout the year, but really understanding the management process. Like that, it's important to have someone who's managing the program. Um, when you have 400 matters that are ongoing throughout the firm, you know it's important to make sure that they're staffed appropriately and that you're getting good opportunities for people. And so I think that really has changed. You know, and in, in you know the the the. Um, uh, the way that that firms have looked upon pro bono and the way that they understand that it's really important to have mo- a lot of firms, at least who are signatories, have you know a, a person who's in charge of of managing the the, pro- the the program is important. So I'd say that's probably the biggest change. What's on the pro bono horizon for Mintz Levin over the next year or so? So I would say over the next year or so, we'll definitely continue to do a lot of the great work that we've been doing on domestic violence that comprises probably 30% of the work that we do, which is representing individuals um, and and representing coalitions, um, both in individual matters, but also in appellate work and in amicus briefs and in a lot of corporate work and legislative work, both nationally and locally in our different offices. So we'll definitely continue that. Um, one, a couple of other exciting things we're, we're working on is um, we are developing um, with the Access to Justice Commission in Massachusetts um, and working with other law firms in Boston, we're developing an appellate pilot pro bono project, um, which is very exciting. Um, and we've been working on that project. I'm, I'm going to be incoming co-chair of our Access to Justice Commission in Massachusetts, and I've been working on developing this project for the last year and a half with a great team of uh, folks from the courts and folks from the Access to Justice Commission and bar associations and legal services. So it's just really wonderful public-private legal services partnership. Um, and uh, hopefully that's – I'm really excited about that program because that's going to be kicked off um, uh, in the coming months and we'll be able to really hopefully have some significant things to talk about, uh, about you know real uh, – cases that have come up to the appeals court and the Supreme Judicial Court here in Massachusetts that can really make a difference for low-income people um, more at a global level. Um, and so I'm very excited about that, too. And we're, we're doing other things with the Access to Justice Commission, too. Um, Mintz Levin is working, uh, is, uh, is working closely with the commission and with the Lawyers Clearinghouse here in um, Massachusetts on uh, continuing our work with something called the Access to Justice Fellows Program, which matches senior uh, lawyers, retired and retiring lawyers and judges, with um, placements in legal services and nonprofit uh, organizations. Um, and throughout the last three years, we've been able to provide about t- close to 22,000 pro bono hours just through this program. And so we're excited to expand, continue expanding the program over the next year and be able to continue to serve 
um, this you know vast need in 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 Massachusetts with this wonderful group of distinguished and um, experienced uh, senior lawyers. Okay, that's good. Now, I want to touch on the partnerships. You mentioned that you guys were partnering with another law firm. Um, is that becoming increasingly popular at your firm? Are you guys partnering? Do you, do you see more partnerships with law firms and in-house legal departments or public interest organizations? Is that something that you guys are... Yeah, I would say that um, with respect to law firms, I think that there's an understanding, at least in Boston, we, you know, we, there is an understanding that if we work together, we can definitely make more of a difference than if we work uh, in silos. And so there's definitely an interest in trying to do that as much as we can. Um, the pro bono man managers of the various firms that have full-time pro bono managers get together every six weeks and uh, in the morning and uh, for an hour and a half and talk about trying to collaborate and talk about challenges and opportunities. Um, we also, for the last, I would say, seven or eight years, we have partnered, Ms. Levin has partnered with our clients, our in-house legal teams, on different initiatives. We work on a homeless clinic, for example, with our client Liberty Mutual, and we've done that for the last eight years. And when we first started that, um, you know, Liberty Mutual would just come to the clinic, which was fantastic, and, and provide support there. But now we actually work on cases together, and then they have, they've been terrific about taking cases that we're conflicted out of, and we take cases that, we're there, that they're conflicted out of. And so it's been a really wonderful way to work together with our clients. And so we're continuing we're continuing to do that with them and, and looking for opportunities um, to work with our other clients in that way. That's awesome. Well, Susan, I think that you've answered all of my questions, and I want to thank you again for joining us. This was great, and I think we got some great information here. Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning. We hope you enjoyed this edition of PBI's Pro Bono Happy Hour. We want to thank Susan Finnegan of Mintz, Levin, Cohn, Ferris, Glovsky, and Popeo for speaking with us. To listen to more podcasts in this series or learn about additional pro bono resources, visit www.probonoinst.org slash podcasts. If you're interested in having your firm featured on the Pro Bono Happy Hour, please email us at probono at probonoinst.org. Thank you for joining us, and we'll talk to you again soon on the Pro Bono Happy Hour.